Hi. Hi guys. Hi again. Um. Hi, my name is Caroline. I'm a jewelry designer. Waiting for the tractor to pass by. Perfect, right? Hi, my name is Caroline. I'm a jewelry designer and this is my studio. My family and I moved to France early this year, so here I am in my French studio and I would like to share some of what has happened since we moved here. I have tried to make this kind of video for months, but <laughs> as things around me were still constantly changing so much and I always felt like I didn't know where to start this video and where to end and what to tell and what not. I never managed to finish this video, so let's hope this time I will get to the end today and upload it soon. The past few months my life changed a lot and it affected me running my business. Moving, getting used to our new surroundings, creating new habits and so on, it all takes time. As a creative entrepreneur I learned that it is important to feel good and comfortable so I can create my best work. And moving made me feel very uncomfortable. But I knew that would happen and I know being uncomfortable will make me learn new things and bring me to new inspiration. Simply said, I went from a jewelry maker who was spending most of her time indoors working while dreaming of a life more outdoors to a gardener spending most of my days outdoors, dreaming to have my studio built so I could be making jewelry again. Don't get me wrong, I love spending time outside in our gardens. It calms me and it recharges my creative energy. But ever since I started pursuing a creative career, I never spent this long without a studio. Even though that studio was very limited at the start, I got used to having and being able to work with all the tools and equipment that I gathered over the years. Sometimes it's good when you have to miss those things for a while in order to appreciate them fully once you have them back. At the beginning of this year, we moved from Belgium to France. I started the year with a lot of plans and goals for my jewelry business and wanted to document the journey here on YouTube. Those who were already following me know that I had my studio in Antwerp for just one year because we sold our previous house and were waiting for all the paperwork to be done to be able to move to our new house here in France. I loved my rental studio in Antwerp. It was just perfect for this in-between moment and it was a place where I was able to still make jewelry during the first uh, months of the pandemic. Watching clips from those last days I worked there makes me realize it is the first time I properly said goodbye to a studio space. When I moved out somewhere before, I was always so rushed and freaking out. This time I remember feeling nervous, but calmer than usual. And also excited, so excited, because we were not just changing our location, my family and I we're going to start the kind of life we wanted to live, closer to nature, following the rhythm of the seasons. My goal was to enjoy that part and take in nature's peace and quiet. <laughs> but to be honest, I was also impatient since I had so many dreams for our new place, things I wanted to do for so long, like renovating the old pig barns into studio spaces, growing tons of veggies, that a lot of time and a lot of days I was rushing. I felt guilty all the time for not doing enough, not finishing half of my to-do list for the day. And it took me a lot of time. But I am learning to calm down, see all the things we did manage to do. Well, actually, the garden teached me that because it showed me that if you put in some effort, even when it isn't perfect, you'll be rewarded later on by just planting seeds, care for the seedlings and show patience. 
we were rewarded with an abundance of delicious homegrown veggies a few months later. Moving affected our four-year-old twins too, of course, and going to school in a different language and all the other changes wasn't easy. It reminded me that obviously I can make plans and set goals, but I'm not alone in this. My husband and I talked a lot about what we want and every decision we make, we make because we think it is best for our family. So we are always adapting our plans whenever we see something doesn't feel right for us or our kids. I want to be a mom who spends a lot of time with her kids. I want to show and teach them so much by doing things together. I want to help them become people who care for others and our planet. I want them to explore and get confident. I want them to discover their own talents. I want to practice what I preach to them, but I also want to work and I want my job to also reflect my values. So as we strive to create a life that has family, nature and work all in a balance that feels right for us, I often felt like I was setting the bar too high for myself, but at the same time I can't manage to lower that bar <laughs> because all those things matter so much to me. Moving to another country, even if it's not that far, made all these things much more clear. And I know it's going to be okay, because the life we are creating for ourselves here feels so right. I filmed a lot of clips here and there from our journey, but didn't manage to edit videos. And since we have terribly slow internet here, uploading was almost impossible. We aren't just growing food and raising kids here. I feel like I am also growing. I think there aren't a lot of years in my life, except from maybe early childhood, <laughs> that I've learned so much about so many things. <laughs> For example, about me as a person, or about plants and soil. I tried out so many things. I have been studying in books and on the internet for years. I was amazed by how easy it actually was to grow our own food from seeds and my passion for growing all things is even bigger than I imagined it to become. The first months I was just overwhelmed all the time, while now feeling overwhelmed is accompanied by feeling blessed with where we are and amazed by the abundance of food we have. It makes me excited of what more I'll be learning in the future. As an artist, I am curious how this change will reflect on my work. For months, I haven't felt the need to create new designs. And at the start, I even was a bit relieved to take a little break from working in my studio. Because all the change took so much of my energy that I didn't feel creative at all. <laughs> that might also be because we were creating and making all the time in our gardens with the renovation now that the big growing season is over and we are getting settled a little more it is changing and i feel the garden is a huge inspiration now so i am glad that fall has made me slow down a bit <laughs> it is my favorite season and during fall and winter, I have all these pictures and clips I filmed during spring and summer to help me reflect on the past few months. Reflecting, obviously, wasn't the only thing I was doing these last months of the year. From the start, Jordi, my husband, was focusing most on the renovation. I helped him wherever I could, while the garden was the other way around, so we each had our own territory, so to speak, um, of things to look up information about and make decisions on. And we always had each other's backs when tasks were too big to tackle alone. We have and will be sort of continue to work like this, but for myself I came up with some kind of weekly schedule, which is helping me to stay on track. Our kids go to school four days a week and on those days I'm working on my jewelry business and help Jordi whenever he needs an extra pair of hands 
as he is helping me with the business whenever he can't continue on the renovations, like now for example, as it is too cold. We keep on working in the garden two days a week, even though not a lot is growing right now. We learned a lot from this year and we want to prepare our garden for next year. Working in the garden is something that also motivates our kids to come outside as well. And sometimes they want to help, sometimes they just want to play in parts of the garden we especially set up for them. Sundays we keep as our family day and we would like to spend them in the forest nearby or visiting old towns and castles. This is something I really love about where we live now. We only need to take a short drive or hike to feel like we're on a vacation in another country. <laughs> what I was afraid about while packing up for the move was that I knew it probably would take us a while before we could set up my studio again. And this business is my job, not my hobby. So closing my business in Belgium and not knowing <sighs> when I could start again in France obviously was stressful. Especially since this is now our only source of income. Renovating takes up a lot of time and is expensive. We took on the huge task of converting super old stone barns into a jewelry studio while we had never done something like this before. Yeah, <laughs> it always <laughs> ends up being more expensive than you calculated at the start and it will always take up much more time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I am extremely happy we finished the first part of the conversion so I have a studio, <laughs> even though it is again a temporary one. Because this small studio will in the future become an artist in resonance space when the big jewelry studio will be finished next year, hopefully. <laughs> so since September I am working in this space and making jewelry for this holiday season and hopefully next year I will move all my stuff over to the big studio. In my next videos I will show the whole renovation of the building that is finished and I'll show you my current studio a little bit more in detail. I'll also show you what we are renovating at this moment and after that I'll be sharing more videos on jewelry making and running a creative business again. If you're not following me on Instagram yet I'll share the link in the description I plan on using my IG stories as a sort of studio vlog on the go team, as uploading big videos is difficult with our current internet options, but uploading to my IG stories is easier. If you have any questions about running a jewelry business or about a certain technique you think I know more about, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram as well or drop the question in the comments below as I would like to answer a lot of the questions I get often in upcoming videos. For example, I have a lot of questions about the lost wax technique and some of those questions keep coming back so I think the answers could be interesting as a video. We're also going to start sharing videos about our life here all things we'd like to share besides jewelry making. <laughs> you will also find a link to that channel down below. It's called The Artisan Homestead. I think that was it, so thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you are well. Don't forget to go outside, feel the seasons changing. I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.